I obtained some clues from the observation. Each transverse process is widely separated from the other. It is easy to count the number of transverse process instead of a facet joint. And it is closely related to adjacent facet joint. So, identify and count the transverse process instead of a facet joint. Hello, I'm Dr. Lee. Welcome to Practical Pain Management. Please turn on English caption and let's go. Please watch the video that I captured from the famous YouTube channel. It's about the cervical facet joint ultrasound scan. He chose a convex proof and intend to go in auto plan technique. However, I believe the lateral neck is narrow space to accommodate a sizable convex proof and putting the needle will be awkward. So I prefer linear proof and in-plane technique. I share my technique from the basic. There is nothing important than safety. She is rubbing the skin with cotton balls with contained a mix of alcohol and an aqueous form of chlorhexidine. I always wear a handmade aseptic form sleeve. I try not to cover the patient's whole face. Some patients feel highly anxious. Don't get me wrong, I do not use particulate steroid. I always use a lipid form of dexamethasone. That is why the liquid looks white. I spend a lot of time on pre-scanning. The scanning initiates from the oblique scanning of the inferior oblique capillus muscle and count down to the lower cervical spine. The inferior oblique capillus muscle is a significant landmark. It is an image of ultrasound proof orientation and longitudinal scan of that muscle. After getting the inferior oblique capillus muscle, I slide down the proof parallel to that muscle. It is an orientation of the proof and the scanning sequences. As you can see from the model, it is easy to tell the difference between the facet joint and articular pillar. However, the ultrasound image is different. The capsular window of the facet joint looks like a small slit in the longitudinal scan. It is more